Hello everyone and welcome back to Run It Up, Run It Up number 88. We are here today playing some $1, $2, no limit Texas Hold'em on UltimatePoker.com. And uh, let's take a look at the lineup we have here today. I think that the person we know the most here is B. Hanks, the one and only Brent Hanks, Ultimate Poker Pro. Uh, I believe he's a World Series Poker bracelet winner. Actually, for sure, he won a bracelet, I believe, last summer, a year, 2012, maybe. And uh, besides that, don't recognize the guy to our left, guy to our right, might be familiar, I don't know. Poker chumps all look the same to me. What can I say? <laughs> and uh, I don't believe we know. I think actually we might know this guy. We've seen him around a little bit actually. The Xerxes guy. But uh, nothing too crazy. Let's see if we can't run it up today and see if uh, we can finally stick the $2,000 mark. I feel like every time we've hit 2K, we have immediately lost the session after. And I'm sick of having to erase and rewrite the 1 and 2. I want to just stick with the land of 2000s. Let's see if we can't do that. Not going to fold here to every raise. We have position and two cards. How do we fold? Can't fold. Let's see if flop dealer. All right. Interesting flop. We have a chance of winning this. Sometimes he'll just check and fold, which would be fine with me, of course, given that we have eight high. The first part of our plan is in progress. There is def definitely some chance he doesn't check fold, right? He could have a hand like two tens or two nines, something in that range, which uh, would check call and not check fold. But we'd still win this pot on a variety of turns and or rivers. Uh, saying hello? We'll say hello as well. Maybe we get a little extra fold equity because we're a friendly Jake Carver. And look at that. We got it done. No problem. All right. Off to a nice little start. I love when we start sessions with bluffs. It always goes well for us. I bet you if you look back historically at all the sessions that started out with bluffs, I bet you those typically end happier or there are better videos or something. Who, who knows? But I feel like that's uh, probably true. I uh, will be opening here if it folds to us. I will be opening a little bit tighter because Brent's obviously pretty good. So I don't want to go too crazy, but I can't fold hands as good as 8-10 offsuit. That's, that's just crazy talk. Also, the other thing is that this guy's got a double stack, so he's been winning, and Brent also has a triple stack, so he's probably been winning. Obviously, he could be in for $800, and both of them could be stuck, but uh, given that our opponents are winning, we'll be a little bit more tighter, because, you know, why is that? Tell me why, people. Uh, if you've said the answer to that, because, you know, they're winning, they're feeling good, you know, they're, uh, they're feeling their oats a little bit. They've been playing, they've been winning, whether they've been playing good or playing poorly, they've still been winning money. So they might be a little bit more uh, willing to put us in the cage a little bit, or at least to try, you know. So uh, against people who have been winning on our left, our adjustment should be, well, we're going to watch and see and absorb the information as we can. How do you guys like that? That's right. That's very good absorb, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's very clearly absorbing. <laughs> We're going to take note of all the things going on, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. That's right. Video is being made for this. If, if they're not, yes. First of all, yes, there is. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but, you know, maybe they're just uh, normal. Maybe it doesn't make a difference that they have won money. Maybe it's yes, normal. But uh, it might not be. Maybe they're feeling themselves. So given that they're just more likely to be uh, a little bit more feeling themselves, we'll play a little bit tighter for the time being. As far as anything else goes, I think that's pretty much it. I had an idea to do a little bit of a different video today, but I actually couldn't get all the ingredients I needed to make the beautiful video recipe come true. But I've got some cool things in mind. I love the little time machine stuff we do every once in a while, and uh, there'll be another adventure coming soon. I will also say that this will be the last video of the week. I know, don't cry too much, but uh, there'll be no video tomorrow, but we'll be back, obviously, for a full slate of videos next week, and then some. Next week will be a pretty awesome week of videos actually there's some really cool things going on but um yeah no video tomorrow i can't do it i'm sorry it's new year's week everyone's taking like the week off i have taken no days off i need to take i need to take one day and do some things okay please <laughs> forgive me but please so uh so yeah another really sad news i uh i guess we'll play this hand first flopped ourselves a gut shot certainly gonna just start with a bet two dollars seems like the correct amount not low Give me the money. That's right. Put it right on the pile. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know where this came from. You know, a lot of jokes origin with people that I know. I can say, oh, yeah, that's from this thing. I don't know where the claw came from. It was just a uh, thing. And now it's a thing that happens all the time. You got to give them the claw treatment. How else do you really, you know, let them know? <laughs> that's right. A lot of my jokes, actually, I give credit to Dan O'Brien for because he's such like a, see, he says them without joking. You know, I, I've turned them into jokes. <laughs> he's, you know, more of a joke in person, you know, incarnate even, I think is what I was trying to say there. A little re-raise here from the big blind and then a bet take it down. That's a pretty good flop for a re-raiser, generally speaking. I think we'll be folding the king and three. Let's see if we can just avoid losing lots of money today. Let's just pile it to a solid win, you know? You don't ever have to hit a home run. You can just be a, a nice solid hit and get on base and be very happy with that. Let's just do that today. That seems like a totally fine objective. Let's see. No crazy bluffs. No crazy all-ins. Let's just uh, solid poker. Solid discipline poker. And we'll read some Dear J. Carvers to keep us on the right track. That's right. Got a huge pile here of Dear J. Carver emails that I'm very looking forward to getting through. And uh, seeing what we can come up with there. We've been speaking Dutch lately and German and all sorts of things. If you have, an, if you have a question for me, dearjcarver at gmail.com. Fire it off out there. And you may see yourself here on Run It Up with me sometime next week. So uh, I was going to talk about how disappointed I was. Uh, okay. I feel like, generally speaking, in life, poker has made me very uh, tilt-free, generally speaking. Like, or I'll tilt, but I'll usually be fine. There, there are only very narrow things that really tilt me these days. And I will say that some of the time I have been very tilted by League of Legends, but I, I wasn't really so tilted by the loss of my promotion matches to gold, which happened, as much as I was the fact that I went 1-2 and two in the next three games that I played. Now I have 40 points, 40 LP if you're familiar with the system. I have to do all this work to get back there. It's just kind of crazy. I feel like it's very silly and a very frustrating thing. You know, League of Legends has a lot of problems with players who are toxic and abusive, and I feel like uh, the game kind of encourages that when it doesn't just have a very clearly understood progress slider for promotions. I don't understand why it's got to be as frustrating as it is. You know, I was at 99. You have to get to 100 to qualify for promotions. I was at 99 and I won a game and I got zero points. What the heck? Don't understand it. I think it's very uh, frustrating. So uh, solid poker would dictate maybe we should just check. But I feel like he's got one pair here so very often. And uh, he's kind of short stacked. Maybe he'll just fold if he has just like a three or a two or maybe even a four if he's super nitty. You know, got to give it a try. Don't think King High wins there often enough. We do beat Queen 6 and Jack 6 and Jack 5, stuff like that. But I think betting makes more sense than anything else. I'll put a dollar in the machine. Run the cards, dealer. <laughs> you guys like my dollar in the machine? <laughs> huh? All right. I guess that's it. We gave a dollar away to charity here. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, looks like we probably were not going to win this pot regardless. Pot. I bet the pot. All right. You win the pot. That's right. Alien alien taking out the phasers. <laughs> I had nowhere to go with that. I walked myself off the plank. I didn't know where I was going to go with it, and I had nowhere to go. So off the plank with me. I think I'm going to re-raise here. I feel like it's a good spot to do it. We got a guy who has kind of short stacked. We probably have him beat. This guy could just call. I think solid poker dictates re-raising here is fine. I might have made it a little bit too big, actually. Maybe I should have made it like 21, something like that, 22. But I think that kind of like precision bed sizing differences doesn't make an enormous difference at this point in uh, the poker or, you know, stake levels, things like that. Or maybe it did. Either way, can't fold. Look at this. 40 to win, 142. That's a price I cannot turn down. Obviously, I'm a little concerned, but he did re-raise not that long ago, so he's maybe at least, at least slightly more likely to be aggressive and loose here than normal, but obviously, I'm slightly concerned. Let's play make a pair, go all in. Didn't do it, by the way. Well, what's that about the solid discipline poker? It's pretty solid. We added King Queen. What were we supposed to do? I feel like it was a totally fine spot. We just happened to get ourselves here. Well, I'm glad we didn't make a pair of queens. Oh, sneaky, sneaky for the pocket tens. No big deal. No big deal or nothing. Two queens? Flush draw? No, no. Pink. 
<laughs> that's the hand history of what happened according to Jay Carver in case you didn't know what that was all about. So, uh, so yeah, so now I'm back in the grind. I got to grind myself back up. I'm not even too tilted by it because I feel like I've improved dramatically being that I've been putting in the tumbler, but it's very frustrating. And I feel like I wish they would just have a very clear progress bar. And every time you win a game, you win the same amount of points. I don't know. It just seems like a very silly thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, obviously you don't know what I'm talking about, but it just seems generally like a thing that, you know, they should just have fixed so that it makes clear sense, clear road to progress and, Instead of like a kind of like a weird, I feel like I would understand it better if there was like a goat sacrifice involved. I feel like I would at least understand that kind of sort of. You have to sacrifice a goat, something happens. I don't understand why a lot of the things happen in League of Legends as it does with the point system. Anyway, enough of that. Decided to raise against two limps here with Jack Six of Hearts. Not a thing that I d that I do too often, but decided to do it here. Let's see if we're rewarded for our very tight, disciplined poker. <laughs> Four hearts. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can add a fifth red card to our collection. If it checks to us, we're going to bet ace high board. I feel pretty good about it. We're pre-flop raiser. We could definitely have an ace here. Very often, even. I would even go so far as to say. Uh, let's bet $24. Could have also bet like $18. I think it's fine. If somebody raises, we're going to be in a weird situation because we're not going to really want to fold. And uh, honestly, I probably am not going to fold if somebody shoves or something here. Uh, this check raise is a little sad, but... Uh, I don't know. What are we going to do here? We could call on the assumption that when we hit a heart, we win. But we make mistakes against some hands. Does he ever fold if we shove 115 to 68? Probably not. Uh, I guess we could just fold. God, that seems so gross. I don't know how we do that, but all right, I guess we do. I don't know. I got to really think about that situation a little bit more. It just seems like maybe I should have bet a little bit smaller, bet like 18, something like that. God, it seems gross to fold the flush draw there, but I also just feel like it's very hard to imagine that he doesn't have us in, like, really awful shape. In which case, like, I guess we could call and see a turn card, but we're a pretty big dog to get there on one card. And it's a pretty... We haven't seen him slow down on turn cards, so we're just peeling one to see a heart, and then if a heart doesn't come, we just fold a heart or a six or a jack, I suppose. But, uh, by the way, how's this disciplined poker been going on right now, huh? <laughs> very disciplined poker. That's right. Um... But uh, I can't do it. I can't do the solid goal moving. I got to get in there. I, I don't know what to say. You know, I went without online poker for two years. America took away poker from me for two years. How do I fold now that I have Jack Six of Hearts? I seem, it seems very impossible to me. Uh, under the gun. Here we are. Let's see. I guess that will be folded. Could start reloading. We're at the point now where I guess we should at least consider it. But I don't really hate it because we've got two guys on our left who are kind of loose. So I don't mind being a little bit shorter. Gives us a little bit easier of decisions, and we're still pretty similarly stacked with this guy. So I actually think we'll probably just hang out for 126. We'll reload if we get drop under 100, though. I think that check six of hard hands is actually pretty interesting. I mean, I could just check back on flop, but checking back on flop is not realistic. I think the I think the real I'm just thinking through all the options we have here, but I think checking back on flop is interesting, but ultimately pretty bad, you know. Because what if we just bet and then this guy folds pocket threes, this guy folds pocket eights, this guy folds, uh, you know, king queen? We we do it. Three better hands will just fold. So we definitely have to bet, but I think I'm going to bet too much. I should have bet like 15, 16, 18, something like that. If we ever get check raise bluffed there, oh my god, it's such a disaster. It's such a disaster. And we definitely could have, which is why I'm kind of upset that we played our hand that way. I'm not really upset, but uh, I'm not thrilled about it either. So I think we probably could have done that better in some way, betting smaller. But I, I don't mind bet folding once we do bet, because I just feel like there's a very small chance that this guy doesn't have us beat somehow, some way, if not horribly beat with a set or something of the sort. Uh, I'm planning on re-raising here against the pot size raised on, on the button. We only have $120. I feel like this is a, a pretty good spot for us to just re-raise. 21, 20, can't go too wrong here, I don't think. 21, dealer. Three times the bet. If our opponent re-raises, run the cards. If our opponent calls, let's make a decision. <laughs> we make a decision. All right, interesting flop here. I am going to do a check raise all in, I think. I believe that makes the most sense. It allows him to take a shot and try to bluff, much like we did with the 8-6 offsuit earlier in the video. The worst thing that happens is it goes check check, but I feel like when it goes check check, we still win the pot relatively often on turns and or rivers. I will bet now small now. I'm a little concerned because we're kind of representing weakness a little bit here with all of this, but 
And then a quick, quick shove. I'm a little dubious of this whole nonsense. Like, what did you do? You checked back flop, and now you're doing this with what now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't planning on folding, but then I again talked myself into folding, which is funny because that's how I felt about the last hand too. I I really don't. I mean, you know, it doesn't make a it doesn't make a ton. It doesn't make a ton of sense, you know. Like, what does he do? He's checking back flop and then insta shoving turn. Like, he could be doing that with a with like a trap sort of a hand. I suppose it is possible, but I think that I don't know. I just feel like the the snap turn shove is a uh, is an interesting interesting thing. Like, if he just bet flop, he would have got all the money. So if he had it, if he had it, <laughs> he lost uh, he lost out on the rest of our stack. But uh, if he didn't have it, it seems like a bizarre thing. I mean, we might have asked for that by betting smaller on the turn, but I, I don't know. Again, I feel like uh, I feel like we've been put in some weird situations here. We've been the ones in the cage for the change for a change. But I, I don't hate any of the decisions that we made. I just feel like we've been uh, put into these like rumbles and weird situations. I wonder maybe he just insta acts all the time. He just snap checked the turn there so maybe uh maybe that is true i mean you know both times we folded jack high and then we folded ace 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 high but you know we have a lot of equity in both situations with ace queen you know, we beat all the draws with ace queen we beat jack queen and jack nine and six seven and diamonds so we beat a bunch of draws and stuff on the second hand but i don't know if he'd play a lot of the draws that way you're really snap shoving with a draw on the turn like that a draw you didn't bet on flop you're now snap shoving with on the turn i mean you know I I am very concerned as to whether or not we got bluffed on the second hand. If I had to pick a hand that I thought we were more likely to get bluffed on, I would definitely lean towards it being the the second one. But uh I think the first the first one with the Jack Six of Hearts I feel more confident on than I do about the second one. Boy, discipline solid poker. It didn't really happen, did it? <laughs> didn't really happen at all. Uh, actually, but you know, uh, uh, it makes it more entertaining this way. <laughs> sure, whatever. Okay, good. Twenty dollars. Enjoy it. Take it. Whatever. Uh, you know, I guess we're here to just give it away today. Apparently, twenty dollars. Enjoy it. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. You know, it's obviously fine. I'm not obviously. Uh, it's gonna work in a vacuum. Often enough, he's gonna just raise fold, and then he calls, and we win the pot more often than we lose the pot in position and all of that. All right, I just fold. I take the hand off. Check it off so you can enjoy it. I'll just retire for the hand. I feel like we've been put through enough for the time being. God, we just can't stick in 2K. I just want to not have to rewrite the two. That's all I want. I just Can I just keep like a tally underneath it of all the money we've lost underneath 2K? God, that's all I want in my life for the day. I just don't want to erase the two and make it a one all over again. Come on, please. Somebody just flip with us or something. That's all I want is a 55-45 for my, my stack right now. Not even my stack. All I need is a... 100 or whatever it is. We're stuck 140, 135 right now. All I need is like $70. That's all I need. Let's see if we can't do it in the next 10, 15 ish minutes or so. Gonna do a little bit of a shorter video. I feel like everybody's just like off this week, and I feel like I made a bit of a mistake making three hour long videos this week already. Like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were all hour long videos, and uh, I feel like that was probably just a mistake for this week because people are off and. You know, it's vacation week. Some For some reason, I just, uh, I don't know. I should have made the videos shorter, generally speaking. So today's will be a little bit shorter than normal. Dear Jay Carver. That's right. I didn't even transition. I just read an email. What are you going to do about it? Bitch. <laughs> Dear Jay Carver. First off, you are the hammer slammer, driller thriller of poker. If you say so. <laughs> Whatever you say. You're not? Yeah. You're not my dad. Don't tell me who I am. I can be anything I want. I'm a snowflake. Beautiful. Unique. I think it's all I have in common with a snowflake. <laughs> I wanted to get your thoughts on Tony G. His poker etiquette, I think, is a little off kilter. Well, that's true. 
but uh, I would uh, I would bet you that his poker etiquette in a non televised setting is probably totally fine. When you're on TV, it's a free for all. People do and say what they want to get on TV and to be well known. If Tony G kept his mouth shut, do you think anyone would know who Tony G is? Probably not. You know, obviously he's a bit of a character, but I've never actually played or met with him. I believe. Uh, d definitely never talked with him, but uh, I would actually bet that he has no idea who I am. Actually, I believe I'm that far off his radar. But uh, no, I I don't know Tony G. And uh, do you think he can play with people's minds, manipulate play by being so arrogant? Of course, definitely with some people. Some people no, but many people. The answer to that is definitely yes. Ten dollars? I take a step. I have the ten eight offsuit. That's what we're pretending to do here with our queen and seven. If somebody raises, I will be very annoyed, but probably not fold. <laughs> How's that for poker logic? If somebody raises, well, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> That's it. The the red the red uh, thing It's really probably why I can't be passive and cool. I've got a aggressive shirt on. I can't be a weak passive player with a red sweatshirt on. Uh, what are my thoughts on people that talk too much during play? Well, people that talk too much is obviously just annoying, but I think it's a perfectly reasonable and viable strategy and concept if that's the kind of a thing you want to do. I think it's fine. You know, look at Negreanu, Helmuth, but neither of those guys talk too much. They just incorporate talking into their games, generally speaking. Boy, I was going to lead on flop, and then I just didn't, and now here we are. Let's uh, make a small bet, and then obviously we're not going to fold. Betting for value and a little bit of protection not much but a little bit like let's say let's say gingery baby has two sevens over there i'd much prefer to bet than check because he's not going to call a bet unless he improves to a hand that beats us anyway so i'd prefer to protect our hand by that concept allow him to fold out the equity that only puts money in the pot if it improves to a hand that defeats us happily calling here on the button this is it we're on a deuce mining expedition boys let's see one all right, not even close. I thought I was going to maybe cheerlead our way to three of a kind, but uh, it didn't work out for us. Still could win this pot. Every once in a while, our opponent could just check and fold. Looks like that was not the case this time, though. Uh, I could do things that are devious, but solid poker. Solid poker. I just want to not write a zero. We got to lose less than $64. <laughs> That's the only goal I have right now for this session. Please, Jay Carver, please win another $60 or whatever it takes for us not to lose $60. That's all I want. Please. Little accomplishments. Little achievements. Minimum raise, dealer. That's right. For $4. Uh, so how do you handle these types of talkative players? Well, there's a difference between people that are talking, uh, okay, maybe there's not a huge difference, but there's a difference between people that are just, like, super chatty, and you don't understand why, you know, like, why are you talking to me so much, person? Like, you know, uh, you know, there are guys who just, like, don't realize what they're doing, and they're just, like, very chatty, and those people are just annoying, and you defeat them by wearing headphones. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Like, I definitely believe that if you have, you know, we talked about it before, you know, you should be social and friendly and it's always better and whatever. But if you're playing a poker table and somebody is just talking and talking and talking about all sorts of nonsense and things, you just, they're just tilting you. And I, I'm definitely the type of person that that does get to me for sure. If it's just like endless streams of someone talking and I have no idea what they're talking about or don't care about what they're talking about. For me, if I just listen to that, it'll drive me crazy. I'll, it'll drive me absolutely crazy. So I think bringing headphones is always a good idea because you put headphones on and all of a sudden you go back to your happy place and you play your, you know, A minus game or whatever it is. Because it's going to be tough to play your A plus game without hearing what's going on around you, at least a little bit. But uh, I think you need that refuge for sure against people that are just annoying talkers. For guys who are like entertaining but talkative, the Mike Mattisows, the Phil Helmuth. The, even the Negranus can for some degree. Me, I think, is another good example, depending on my mood. Tony G is another one. Again, you defeat them by wearing headphones if they're getting under your skin at all. And you can just play your own game and just basically, you know, put your fingers in your ears and say, I'm not listening to anything you have to say. <laughs> I could have made a whole production out of that, by the way. I decided not to. I took the not to route there, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, I think your question of how do you handle these players, whatever. You, the, the, the talkative stuff is most, except most uh, new players are most susceptible to that kind of, like, chitter-chatter nonsense, you know, because the pros, mostly you're going to just keep their mouth shut and focus and just narrow down. 
but it definitely is capable. Some people are very sensitive to talking during hands and stuff like that. So if you're just uh, wanting to be immune to it, my suggestion is headphones. If you want to practice getting better at it, well, that's a whole different conversation about live tells and different people say certain things and different things indicate strength and weakness. And it all depends on the person, situation, stuff like that. Sincerely, Dan, the Run It Up fan. Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate your email, sir. Let's read another one. I'll pull a random one. I'm going to commit to reading it no matter what. <laughs> I might not read it no matter what. Uh, see? Dear J. Carver, this is a run up warrior that wants 1% or more of your 10K tournament. See, I would just skip that one normally. Thank you, but, you know, I appreciate you asking me for 1%, but I love your show and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I'll give you 1%. It's worth zero dollars. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know what to say. It's too late. It's too late. And, uh, you know, maybe it would have changed everything if only I gave you 1%. But I didn't. Sucks. Life's tough, bruh. What are you going to say? I feel like these are all old Dear J. Carvers. I feel like I had new Dear J. Carvers somewhere, but I don't know where they are right now. All right. Let's go through some old Dear J. Carvers. <laughs> okay. Oh, I remember your email. I passed over it because I didn't have the energy, but I have the energy right now. It's very early. Actually, I almost never record videos at this time. It's uh, 1 p.m. You guys are going to get like a late video that I recorded in the afternoon. It's very, uh, it doesn't happen very often. Hasn't in a long time at least. All right. <laughs> I'm going to play this hand and then uh, give you some, uh, some attention here to your email. Very happily calling here. A7 of spades. Let's see three dealer. Not the prettiest of three cards with A7 of spades, but I bet $2 in he calls. All right. So, oh, yeah. I believe we've made it to best hand status. $5. Let's see how much money we can make out of our opponent here. Okay. Slightly concerned, but I'm not that concerned, obviously. Our opponent has plenty of jacks and nines and fives and things like that. Let's bet an amount that lets him call if he is curious, but not too much to make him fold if he is beaten. I think 12 probably accomplishes that. I have ace and seven. Ten and nine. Get out of here, ten and nine. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's fine. You know, we make... Uh, Especially given he just called with two pair. I love our bet. Our bet is perfect. He calls with two pair. We don't actually pay more if he has his beat. And he calls us probably with like any single jack, maybe even like queen 10, you know, stuff like that. So I, I like how he played that hand despite not winning the pot. I guess we'll play this hand as well before I give this to Gusto. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please re-raise. Oh, my God. Please re-raise. Nothing can make me happier than re-raising right now. I guess you could shove and then you would just win. That would be sad. Damn it. These nit bitches, though. What am I going to do? I'll see the hand, and then we'll jump right into it. <laughs> oh, you're being, you're being like Dear J. Carver blocked here by the good hands. You know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you. You're being Dear J. Carver blocked by Ultimate Poker. <laughs> uh, I'm going to raise if it folds to us, even though that hasn't worked out well for us one time yet. Maybe it'll work out this time. Or maybe it won't. We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, I'm going to raise to 8 or maybe 9, maybe 10. All right, now about 9. Uh, about 8. <laughs> huh? It's relatively early in the morning for me, sleep schedule-wise, which is why this is like a bit of a bizarre video. But uh, I, feel like I, I feel like I've enjoyed it. It's a little bit different, but there's always... It's a little something new. I, I bet you that... Oh, I don't know. I feel like there's such a wide spectrum of, of run it up episodes that I'm sure some of you like some so much more than others. And I don't know. They're all wonderful little children to me. 10, 9, 10, 9, 10. 10 is what I decided on. I'm probably done with this little charade. I feel like when somebody check calls here, they're probably not going anywhere. We could fire twice and he'll fold hands like pocket sevens, you know, uh, stuff like that. But limp calls under the gun, ace high flops, typically seems to me like he's going to have an ace here more often than anything else. If we river a queen or a 10, it would be the weirdest situation for us because if he bets, we'd probably consider it. And I think we just fold. I mean, his uh, his play here obviously worked out fine this time, but I actually really feel like against that line, we're going to do so well lifetime. We're going to just crush that line. We lost this time, but if he limp calls under the gun and then 
you know, makes decisions like that post flop. He's going to make so many more mistakes than we are with position and aggression. He won that pot, but I would say that we're probably like, I don't know, given a blend of hands so he can have any, he can have whatever he has and I can have whatever I have. I like our chances in that spot, generally speaking, even though we didn't win that time. All right. <laughs> there you go. Jay Carver, dear Jay Carver, blocked no longer. <clears throat> Dear Jay Carver, I up. I am snowman fever. You said you needed an internet friend from Yorkshire to learn a bit of dialect. Well, here I am, a big fan. Watch all your videos. And teaching you a bit of slang is the least I can do. Seems though you have provided me with hours of entertainment. What are you wanting to learn to say? Don't really have a question about just poker. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to skip the middle part of the sentence and we get to the fun part. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. You're not my dad. Thank you. You asked me to say that. There you go. You got it. All right. So you've given me some slang words here to say from the Yorkshire accent. I'm very excited to do this. Let's uh, give it a go, shall we? Hello equals I up. I up. I up. All right. <laughs> I'm going to the shop. I already would not say I'm going to the shop. That's already a thing I wouldn't say. I'm off to shop. To shop. Tea shop. To shop. All right, I feel like I can even got that. That's not that crazy. Uh, all right, arit, a r e e t, arit. I don't think it's arit. I think arit. I don't know. Your phonetic writing may need some work. Int, didn't, wouldn't, unt, hadn't, ant. Is that really right? Hadn't is ant. I don't know about that one. That also seems kind of weird. But you could be right. Obviously, what do I know? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you switch it all around. Oh my god equals ebagum. What? <laughs> I think you're just messing with me. I think you're just joshing around over here. That's what I'm kind of thinking. King high, minimum raise, dealer. Four dollars. <laughs> Shut the door you have as put wood into hole. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you is ta. Uh, again, I'm not sure. Uh, what kind of Yorkshire accent is this? I don't know. Maybe you're perfect and I'm clearly wrong. I'm just saying. I'm a little suspicious. All right. Minimum raise, Jack7, puppy dog feet. Anyway, thanks for your email. Peace out. Keep up the good work, brother. Thank you, sir. UK running up samurai out there doing work. Thank you very much for your email, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's go to war, kids. Jack7, puppy dog feet. Certainly good enough. Look at the price we're getting. 550 to win 1650. Let's see if flop dealer. Great deal for me. All right, pretty good flop for us. We have a three straight, three flush. Actually, we have a gut shot, three flush, and bottom purr. Things that make me happy all. <laughs> uh, call. Let's see a turn card. Whoops. All right, certainly not a card that has improved us, but we'd not expect it to improve our opponent either. If it goes check, check, we probably have the best hand. If uh, if it goes bet, I don't know. We might not, or we might. He could have a hand like two queens and just be value betting us, you know, thinking he has the best hand. But I feel like he'd actually bet more if he had us, like, totally crushed. You'd think he would be suspicious to at least believe that it is possible. Three does not help us, nor our opponent. Let's check and make a decision here. I am probably not going to fold unless he bets something crazy. All right. So we lost to uh, that hand, but I feel like we played our hand very relatively reasonably. I mean, uh, let's talk about that. Preflop, fine. Flop, fine. Turn, fine. I didn't think he was particularly strong, so two hits doesn't like blow my mind or anything that he had that. I also wouldn't expect him to have. Oh, uh, I guess it's. I guess that is fine. I actually thought when he checks back on river, we probably win there like. 70% of the time, something like that. He'll just have like ace queen, ace jack, you know, could have ace king obviously as well. Um, something like that. Once in a while he'll show up with like, you know, like ace nine, which has his beat or something like that as well. And then once in a while he'll have like a really tightly played like two queens or something in that, in that range. So, uh, all right, I guess, uh, all right, it is, it is, we hit the 35-minute mark. I had said 30 minutes. All right, one more orbit for the fans, for the fans, one more. Not doing a video tomorrow, so all right, this is your, this is your <laughs> Run It Up video for tomorrow. You can basically pretend right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Run It Up. Run It Up number 89. We are here today, stuck $200. I'm going to have to be back at $1,800. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn it. 
Damn it. I'm gonna have to do like a bonus section session over the weekend. I'll of course record it, don't worry. I'll have to get back over it. I just wanna stick to the 2K. I just want that as a goal. I just wanna get to like 2400 and then not have to worry about it. Whatever it takes. I could four table and do, oh uh, yeah, this guy with RUI. Get out of here, RUI. Are you I kidding me? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What else do you say? Yes? Smiley face? I went with, oh, uh, yeah. Huge run it up. Oh, uh, yeah. I think this will definitely be the last orbit, though. I am afraid Cinderella, etc., becomes a pumpkin after 45 minutes. All right. We got an orbit left to go. I guess we could reload for another like a uh, bit of money. 390, I believe we are in for at the moment. Doesn't make an enormous difference, I suppose. Actually, I could have just not reloaded for another orbit. Who cares? I guess it gives us equally equal decisions near so. All right. All right. So, uh, well, I got some work to do again last week. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Come on. Three hands. Let's do it. Please. Let's just make it happen. I, I just, I guess it's very unlikely at this point that we have three hands to win, uh, $200 or a hundred dollars or whatever it is. What are we at? We're at, uh, let's see when this all adds together. We're at 200. We're in for 390. So we're stuck 190 right now. So we're at 18, 1850, 1870, something like that. All right. <laughs> Damn it. Why can't we just stick in the 2K land? That's all I want to know. Why can't we just do that? Maybe next time. Going to be raising it up here if it's folded to us. Even if it's not, I probably wouldn't have folded. Minimum raise, dealer. Let's see if it is. Oh, we get a customer. All right. Hey, we flopped ourselves a gut shot. Maybe our opponent will have 6 8 and we'll just turn a 10. That would do it. $5. Redbird. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bet here twice. I think there's a decent chance our opponent will fold the 7. We'll also fold maybe like ace jack, ace queen, stuff like that every once in a while if he has hands like that. Jack is probably good. Obviously, a 10 would be sweet. And uh, once in a while, our opponent will fold the uh, nine, even on uh, particularly merry days. So, all right, we got that one through. Little little last bit of healing there. It's nine off, so the game continues. I think I'll raise to five-ish. I actually think that, generally speaking, I feel like the run-up videos are good at an hour. I feel like I feel like doing five hour-long videos a week may not be sustainable for like the super long time or are not optimal for like a YouTube environment, but I feel like for a poker environment, hour-long videos is just the best way to do it because as a viewer, I don't want to break up videos into different sessions if I can help it. Obviously, like the eight-hour-long like marathon tournament videos, they have to be. But I think for the most part, doing videos where you're, you have an hour-long session makes the most sense because you get to watch the entire spectrum of the session, see all the history and dynamic. Breaking it into like three 20-minute videos just feels wrong to me. And doing 20-minute videos also doesn't obviously allow for enough of the of the fun, dynamic stuff to be developed. So I feel like that's probably, uh, even though I feel like hour-long videos are not necessarily ideal, I feel like they probably might just have to be like our little thing that we do here. All right, so we're in for 390. We lost two, or we ended with three. Okay, I'll just stop talking. And we lost that much. And damn it. <laughs> damn it. Uh, ah. Look at all the numbers I have to rewrite. None of them match. Like run it up, like uh, Price is Right style. I have to rewrite all the numbers. Damn it. Boy, let's do a wrap up. Let's do a little bit of a wrap up. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's little video. Obviously, we did not run it up, but we'll be back trying to run it up again next week. Hopefully, you enjoyed today's video. A little bit something different. I feel like this is also casted a little bit differently than usual. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Don't forget Facebook.com slash Poker for all of your run it up needs, wants, desires, passions, loves, and so on and so forth. Thanks so much for watching as always, guys. I really do appreciate it. We'll be back with more very soon on Monday, most likely. Thanks, guys. I will see you back for more very soon. Peace.